This week has been declared the national mourning period for the victims of the deadly Halloween stampede in Itaewon that claimed 154 lives. We send our deepest condolences to bereaved families. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims. The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why we decided it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. I can't think of a more appropriate time to put social media in the spotlight. Um, some of the footages that are rolling around, it's being used for investigations. That's important. But it also comes with a stern warning. It's not okay to repeat unblurred images from the incident that came out of Itaewon over the weekend. We're joined by Yerika in the studio for our social media minute coverage. Uh, good morning, Yerika. Good morning. I wish I was returning under better yeah. circumstances. Mm. Uh, my heart is so heavy. I think that's the general consensus for those who are both near and far from the story. It's 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 we're watching with disbelief as we get more updates from yep. the Ito and tragedy. It's it's a major headline in not just local news, but all over the world. Yes, CNN, BBC, Reuters. Um so, you know, you talked with Adam about mm. the, the general, you know, the, the outline of what happened, and basically. What we know so far. Yes, exactly. And uh, uh, a lot of the, the foreign media, they're, they're covering, you know, all corners of the story. And uh, one of the things that a lot of people outside of Korea are paying attention to is the area of mm. Itaewon itself. I mean, where is Itaewon? Mm. Why were so many people there on the night right. of Halloween right. in Korea, which does not traditionally celebrate Halloween. Right. Um, I read through so many news articles and uh, they they talked about how Itaewon uh, was one of the top nightlife destinations here in the South Korean capital. And it has been that way for, I would say, for the last, um, well, for decades, actually. But uh, the kind of people it attracted has changed mm. over the years. Uh, it's a trendy hotspot, has nightclubs, right. restaurants, right. cafes, very popular with the young community and the gay communities uh, of Korea as well. Uh, it's also home to the Seoul Central Mosque, has a size of a local Muslim community. Um, you know, it's got the main avenue, but uh, the back alleys can be cramped, very small. It mm. can be hard to navigate after dark, mm. especially when it's very busy mm. on the weekends. Mm. And uh, the disaster that happened on Saturday may prove to be devastating for those who run their businesses in that area. This happened right at the moment when they were about to rebound after being hammered by the pandemic. That's right. There were moments when Itaewon was clearly the hotspot for the country, strictly looking from yes. a business perspective. Yep. And then during the height of the pandemic, it just, there was nothing eventful yeah. happening on the streets. And this was kind of a signal back mm -hmm. to maybe even normalcy. Yes. And it seems that with many of these business holders closing down the store after mm -hmm. the accident over the weekend, it's not just devastating, but I think traumatic for those who run their businesses there. Uh, Itaewon's reputation has certainly evolved over the years, as you've alluded to. Mm -hmm. It attracts such a large, I think, diverse a group of people, yep. expats, for example, yes. from all over the world, young people. Um, it's It was kind of the place to be seen over yep. the weekend. Absolutely. Um, for those of you who are not in the know, uh, Itaewon is located a short walk from the former Yongsan U.S. Army garrison. Um, Itaewon sprang up after the Korean War. It was a hangout spot for American soldiers mm. with bars. There were brothels, uh, you know, fashion retail stores. Right, right. And uh, it didn't always have the best reputation either. No. There was a mysterious killing called the Itaewon murder uh, and other crimes in the late 1990s. It sort of painted a dark uh, image of the area. But uh, early, but later on, it, it became sort of like this uh, destination for or international dining, uh, I guess. Right, you know, right. all these like Mexican restaurants started opening up uh, that led to other international cuisines, you know. Anyways, um, 
what happened was uh, back in 2000, uh, 2001, after the September 11th attack ha- happened in the U.S., uh, the, the, there was a shift to a local clientele. Yeah. Before, it was mostly American soldiers, and uh, there was a change accelerated by, you know, well-known celebrities, household names, opening up restaurants mm-hmm. that became popular with young South Koreans. So, see, there are maybe chapters of each yeah. one's uh, triumphs and falls. And pandemic is just more the recent yes. line of events. Uh, all of this information for some of our non-local listeners, mm-hmm. because we're going to pr- provide a better pon- context as to why Itaewon attracted such a big crowd over the weekend. It's not just about alleviation from pandemic restrictions. Mm-hmm. It is the popular hotspot normally under other circumstances yeah. uh, for Halloween celebration. The district has been a recurrent theme in popular culture. There's hit drama Itaewon class. Yeah. In fact, I saw one of the interviewees saying that was the precise reason why they visited Itaewon yeah. this it weekend. Was just, that that uh, show was especially popular in yeah. Japan, still is. Uh, there's also a K-pop song called yeah. Itaewon Freedom. Them. That's right. Now, before disaster struck, Halloween festivities had been the leading attraction in the area for years. It drew local people, foreigners to the area. Um, but questions have grown in recent years. This is pre-COVID yeah. about the safety of hosting an event that draws tens of thousands of people mm-hmm. to the cramped and the hilly streets, especially without uh, shutting down the main street mm-hmm. uh, to traffic, to accommodate, you know, things like pop-up stores mm-hmm. and kiosks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can get very dangerous. Because those pop-up stores and kiosks in the, in the narrow alleys yep. would decrease the amount exactly. of width that would allow for yep. more safer yep. traffic. On Saturday, huge crowds mostly made up of the so-called COVID generation poured into Taiwan to celebrate Halloween for the first time in three years. That's following the lifting of pandemic restrictions as to the question of why was there yeah. such a massive crowd mm-hmm. it was a threefold increase from just a week earlier that's right seoul is used to large crowds congregating for big festivities mm-hmm. and it seems that some government officials have said that this was expected yeah this was expected and uh, some people are saying that because soulites are used to so many people congregating mm-hmm. during festivities maybe uh they panicked a little too late. Ah, yeah. that, that's actually a fair point. I mean, yeah. there are still investigations happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is really early on, perhaps not even the right time to yeah. be talking about safety precautions. But mm-hmm. going forward, that's what we would need to talk about. Yeah, I mean, large crowds are you know normal for Christmas, yes. New Year's Eve, yes. and fireworks festivals. But this was several tenfolds bigger than any of that, according to eyewitnesses. And now the attention is shifting to the safety standards and crowd control measures in place at these occasions. Mm. And President Yoon seok has already called for a review of the safety of uh, festivity sites. Because leading up to the wee hours of the night, it seems that there were several calls made to the police yes. locally saying yep. that it was a little bit too crowded. Even as early as 8 p.m. Right, yep. right. So we'll have to keep tabs on the investigations going forward. In the meantime, this week has been declared an official mourning period mm-hmm. for the country, and South Korea mourns the victims of the Halloween crush. <sighs> yes, um, I, I read some news yesterday. People were slowly started, you know, coming, returning to that main street of Next to Taiwan. Hamilton yes, Hall. exactly. Um, people lay flowers outside exit one of the Taiwan station, which is right where, very close to where this tragedy happened. Um, you know, many were just like, you know, just standing there staring at the, you know, the site. I think they were still trying to process what happened. It's it's very, very surreal. I, I think that's the general consensus around the story. Yeah. This, again, is a popular neighborhood in the heart of Seoul. It's yeah. hard for us to understand how and why it happened. Uh, many yeah. stand there kind of with a blank expression of in disbelief. I've talked to so many friends who said they woke up early on Sunday morning and mm. they, they saw the news, they saw the headlines, they saw the numbers, and they thought, is this fake news? Yeah. Did they yeah. get the numbers wrong? Right. They simply could not process it, you know? Uh, people lay flowers, handwritten letters, mm. drinks um, around the area. Mm. Uh, people have been bowing their heads uh, to express their condolences. And, uh, you know, social media has also been inundated mm. with uh, the hashtag Pray for Eat, one you also probably saw. Mm. Uh, the thing is, you can get really... Uh, it's it's tricky with social media because in the first few hours of the tragedy happening and the news slowly getting out that this was actually quite serious, there were a lot of posts like 
unfiltered posts unfiltered, on posts uncensored. on TikTok, posts. Instagram videos um, and images, really disturbing images. Because, I mean, we see people, um, both professionals and non-professionals, yeah. um, operating CPR on yes. many of these victims. And, and it seems that... The unfiltered images yeah. went online without sort of censorship that was required. Correct. And what that does to the bereaved families, uh, to, to friends yeah. of the, the, the mm-hmm. lost lives. I, I can't even begin to process what that is. So, again, a word of warning to all of our listeners. I'm sure our listeners are much more mindful than that mm-hmm. to not even to repost those images. It's devastating. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I noticed that mm-hmm. as time went on, people were urging one another to right. be respectful on social media. I ran what I read one post on Twitter that read, when you're sharing or posting photos and videos of the victims of the Ito one crowd surge uh, on the streets getting CPR, please think twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, please don't post what you would not want to encounter on social media if you were their loved ones. So it was even each other keeping, I yes. suppose, each other accountable. Yep. Um, I, I'm glad that there mm-hmm. was a quick wave to overcome the initial postings. Yeah. You know, in this day and age, social media plays such a huge role. And uh, even before the media, you know, reports about what happened, it, it's the citizens, it's the bystanders who are reporting yeah. live, you know, um, what's happening and uh, that, that that can be helpful it could be and going forward for the investigation processes yep. even with with the local police yes. uh, they found the cctv footage and the social media mm-hmm. posts to be helpful initially right. but to censor the faces is i think it's minimal yep. um to be respectful mm-hmm. and mindful is something we can yep. never have enough of right Again, President Yoon has declared a national period of mourning until November mm-hmm. 5th, everyone. And a series of cultural events and concerts uh, scheduled for the remaining Halloween weekend and into early November and even until the rest of this month have been canceled following uh, Saturday's uh, tragedy. The Cultural Ministry announced that the first two sessions of the four-part classical concert series scheduled to be held at Yongbingwan in Cheongwade uh, on Tuesday and Friday have been cancelled. A string of other uh, highly anticipated Mm. events and festivals have been cancelled as well. A Gucci fashion show that we've been talking about on this segment uh, that was expected to, you know, be held with some 500 guests visiting from in and outside of South Korea. It was supposed to be held on Tuesday at Gyeongbokgung. Uh, that's also been cancelled as well. Um, SM Entertainment called off its annual Halloween party. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Busan One Area Festival, which is one of the largest K-pop festivals in South Korea, uh, cancelled the final day's event on Sunday. Um, a global conference for the music industry and platforms Moving the World with Music, Mm. which was also scheduled to take place in Busan on Thursday and Friday, has been postponed. We don't know when it's going to be held, but it has been postponed. Uh, A a slew of other, a string of other events, uh, you can go check them out online, have been concerted. Major theme parks Mm. have joined in the national morning as well, including... Everland and Lotte World. Remember how we talked about Chamsugyo uh, Bridge yes. uh, holding a car-free festival every Sunday? It's been taking place since August. Um, that's been canceled as well. Uh, the Welcome Taehangno Festival, uh, which is an annual festival ho- hosted by the Culture Ministry, uh, called off its Halloween-themed party mm-hmm. on Sunday. There was a, a sort of like a a mini festival in the Sochon area mm-hmm. where I currently have my uh, side project uh, that was canceled, all called off. All called yeah. off. Um, again, I, I think this is right, the right decision, it seems. Yeah. No one no one is, I, I suppose, disappointed. It's It makes sense that yes. these events will be canceled in light of what just happened. And, you know, what's the, the thing I find the most heartbreaking about it is the real stories, mm-hmm. the individual stories and... Uh, oh. Because sometimes we forget because we're so focused on the numbers and they are just as important. But there are faces and stories and lives lost a little too early. Oh, no. All right. Um, Unfortunately, that is the major headlines as going forward with the investigation process. We'll keep our listeners informed. In the meantime, Yerika, I know this was tough. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time.
So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.